Welcome to the tutorial on indices. And in this tutorial, we are going to go through basic index laws. The first topic we're going to cover is how to multiply and divide indices. Let's begin with the first one, how to multiply indices. Now this is the rule we have to follow. Suppose we have x to the power of a times x to the power of b. And this simply becomes x a plus b. So when multiplying indices, we add them together. We're going to put a circle. We're going to ring around our rule. And now we're going to work through a simple example. Suppose we have 7 to the power of 3 times 7 to the power of 4. Now using our rule, this becomes 7, 3, plus 4. So the answer is 7 to the power of 7. So when multiplying indices, we simply add them together. And what about when we are dividing indices? I'm sure you've guessed this already. This time if we have x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b, now this becomes x to the power of a minus b. Now again we're going to put a ring around our rule. That is how we divide indices. As long as the x is the same, x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b, that becomes x to the power of a minus b. Now again, let's work through a simple example. Suppose we have the number 5 to the power of 6 divided by 5 to the power of 2, this becomes 5 to the power of 6 minus 2, and that equals 5 to the power of 4. And that is how we multiply and divide indices. The second topic we are going to cover is cube root. So how do we write down a cube root? Let's uh, begin with an example. Suppose we have number 5 times 5 times 5. And the answer to that question is 125. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. Now we can write this down as powers. It's 5 there's three of them, so 5 to the power of 3 equals 125. There are three fives, so we write down 5 to the power of 3. Now how do we write down the cube root? So we write it down like this. 1, 2, 5. We put a 3 over here. That signifies that, it's, that it is a cube root. So this over here, the 3 over here, signifies that it is a cube root. So the cube root of 125 equals 5. Now there is one other point that we have to note when dealing with cube roots. The cube root of a negative number, let's assume we have this minus x. So this is a negative number. Now the cube root of this, or this can be anything, is also a negative. So the cube root of a negative number, and this is our negative number, the cube root of that will be a negative number. Now let's highlight this with an example. We're going to stick with the fives. So let's assume we have minus 5 times minus 5 times minus 5. 
And the answer to that is minus 125. Don't forget, if we have two minuses, they become a plus. Let me just highlight this. If we've got two minuses, we've got one minus here, and another minus here, they become a plus, but we've got one more minus, and that's the reason why we have a minus. So this time now we have minus 5. We're going to use the same notation as before, minus 5. And how many of these do we have? We've got three of them equals minus 125. And how do we write the cube root down? We write down minus 125, the cube root, equals minus 5. So that is how we write down cube roots, and don't forget, the cube root of a negative number will be negative. Let's move on to our next topic. Powers of 0 and 1. Let's begin with the first one, powers of 0. Now the rule here is, if we have x to the power of 0, the answer is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. We're just going to circle our rule. and Let's uh, work through a few examples. So suppose we have the number 7 to the power of 0. The answer is 1. We have 25 to the power of 0. The answer is 1. And even if we have a negative number, minus 8 to the power of 0, the answer is 1. So anything, any number to the power of 0 equals 1. Now let's move on to powers of 1. Suppose we have y to the power of 1, that becomes simply y. So any number to the power of 1 becomes the number itself. Let's just circle our rule. And we're going to work through a few examples. So suppose this time we have 7 to the power of 1. That becomes 7. 25 to the power of 1 becomes 25. And if we have minus 8, to the power of 1, that becomes simply minus 8. So that is how we work out powers of 0 and powers of 1.